Thank you. Thank you very much uh, to all of you for, for being here today and sharing your time with us, attending this, this course. And of course, uh, thank you very much to NERS, to Rebecca and her group for trusting us for the second year to do this kind of training based on parallel work tools to promote and help developers to in the usage of CPU and GPU based supercomputers or clusters based on OpenMP and OpenCI directives. So thank you. It's really a pleasure to, to be here today. So let's go to the to the real materials. Okay, uh, essentially Helen mentioned this. The reason why we're organizing this course is because NERSC is preparing for the upcoming Perlmutter supercomputer and, and also is trying to help NERSC users to uh, increase the quality and improve the performance and the coding quality of the programs running on the Cori supercomputer or similar, similar machines. So we've been collaborating with NERSC for almost two years now. And as uh, Helen mentioned last year, we organized two courses, one uh, introductory course in, in June and another intermediate level course in, in October. So we would like to first begin uh, by explaining very, very briefly how we build this new course of this year based on the materials and contents that you can find in, at the NERS website. So essentially in the first workshop of, of June, the introductory level, essentially we focused on a small functions, a small kernels trying to understand the type of computations that you could find there and understanding how you can translate that sequential code into parallel code that can be run using OpenMP and OpenCC, both on multi-core CPUs and on graphical processing units on GPUs. And we do this based on an approach that is uh, based on patterns. So in this course, essentially, we focused on describing the essential patterns that uh, support this approach and how you can use this information to insert directives into your code, okay? And we went from simple examples like Pi to more complicated examples like uh, Matmul, Latimax, or, or Lulesh microcard. And this is essentially the, the workshop, the introductory level workshop. And here we have tried also in the contents this year to add links to contents of the training series of 2019 so that you can go directly to a given, to the recording and the slides of a given session to discover uh, more details about the contents that we are assuming here that you already have. In any case, whenever it is mandatory for you to understand some key concepts, we will repeat those concepts uh, during this course. So this is about the introductory level course. And then in October, we uh, also presented the intermediate level course. In this case, we focus on different aspects, not on running in parallel a loop with a given set of computations, but focusing on key features that need to be optimized to increase the performance of code running on CPU and on GPUs. So essentially, we focus on minimizing data transfers. This is the number one challenge when you go and you would try to code for GPUs. Optimizing memory usage because exploiting or not exploiting data locality and all the effects that we have in modern multi-core architectures in our programs and understanding how to address them can make a big difference in terms of performance. So that was the second topic. And the third topic was how we can exploit massive parallelism because we typically in multi-core CPUs, we deal with 10, 20, 30 cores but we, or 20 th threads in your application. But when you go to the GPU, you have to think at a, in a higher uh, dimension. You have to think how to span your code across thousands of threads in general, okay? So these were the three main topics of the intermediate level course. And again, based on the, on the concept of pattern, and we distinguish three types of patterns, compute patterns, memory patterns, and flow patterns that help to understand how the program behaves and how to optimize these three key aspects of, of our programs. So in this uh, new course, essentially we are leveraging on the 
training outcomes of the series of 2019. So essentially you learn, if you review those materials, you will learn the patterns, what are the difference between the patterns, how can you use pattern guided implementation of parallel code with OpenMP and OpenCC for CPU and GPU. And all of this in the scope of a practical step-by-step -step approach to go from sequential to parallel code. We try to avoid a way of parallelizing code that cannot be repeated and systematized because we think this is essential for productivity and to reduce the cost of development and maintaining our scientific and our code bases. So overall, you are learning the basis of best practices for parallel programming with OpenMP and OpenCC for CPUs and GPUs, but it's still working at the kernel level at a one loop level and interactions between two kernels or one or two or three loops. So what is the, the, the barrier that we want to cross today with this new course is to go from working at the kernel level or between the interactions between kernels to whole application level, whole program understanding of the code and how you can start with a new code. You, you, you can, there is no need that you are the developer of that code. Usually you need to address the understanding and parallelizing a code that you have not developed, that you, have, you are not the main maintainer of that code. And this is really, really challenging because it is difficult to maintain the code that we ourselves write. So maintaining code written by a different programmer is even more difficult. So what we will learn during this course is to understand the complexity of porting C, C++ and Fortran applications to GPUs and the importance of thinking in terms of parallelism from the very beginning, even before starting to try to find parts of the code that can be parallelized. A very well, very well known example is, that is in general a best practice recommendation for uh, CPU programming, CMD vector programming and GPU programming is try to avoid arrays of structs in your code because this has a lot of impact in the in expressing and parallelizing your code from the point of view of locality, from the point of view of communications, from the point of view of data transfer. So it has a lot of implications. So in this part of the code, of the, of the learning process, you need to care about your code, how the data structures are designed, how they are processed during the execution of the code. And once you learn that, you can start to think about learning how to parallelize the code, okay? So you will understand the complexity of porting complex applications with the CPK sample that we have selected for this course. In addition, um, we are, it's been almost one year and a half or two years now that we started uh, to work with the high performance computing community to build a knowledge base of defects and recommendations that are best practices for parallel programming in C, C++ and Fortran. So, with all of that knowledge, we have written down that, that knowledge in the form of a small web pages with very simple examples that can explain which are the main issues that you need to address to uh, code high quality parallel codes for, uh, for your applications, okay? So this is an open public catalog of defects recommendations that you can find in this website. So, this public catalog of defense recommendations is a key part of the, of the whole approach because it's a way of writing down the knowledge of experts in a way that new people, newcomers to parallel programming can learn from that. Experts can learn from new trends and changes in the parallel programming APIs or in the programming languages. And also it provides uh, the basis to build tools that can automatically analyze your code, looking for defects and recommendations to suggest you how to write better quality code and do it faster. So this catalog will be a key part of the presentations uh, during this course. And today we will devote 20, 30 minutes to analyzing and describing several defects and recommendations of this catalog. And finally, this is so complicated and tools, machines, and the software stack evolves so fast that we need tools to help us to ensure that our code fulfills parallel programming best practices. And this is where Appentra tools, Parallelware Analyzer, and Parallelware Trainer come into play. Okay? Tools to automate checking and finding defects and recommendations according to the catalog. 
and assist you in the process of developing parallel code. So with this in mind, this is the agenda, a more detailed agenda that of the uh, of the contents that we will see during these days. So today is part one. We have started with the introduction by nurse. Now we are in the welcome uh, part of the our slide. And before the break, we will see an introduction of around 20 minutes to the whole approach that we have described based, based on the catalog and based on the tools to automate a compliance of codes with this catalog. After the break, we will uh, present motives related to NERS applications and how this relates to parallel work patterns that are the basis of the tools that we will be working with during these days. So after that, 30 minutes devoted to explain, describe, and discuss different defects and recommendations from the catalog. Another break. And finally, we will devote roughly one hour to make demonstrations of different capabilities and different functionalities that you have available in trainer and analyzer. We're not assuming any previous knowledge about the tools. So we will start from very simple code examples and we will go to more code, more complex and bigger code bases so you can see the benefits of using these kind of tools for your daily work. And finally, after the third break, we will describe the homework that we are going to propose you to do in the upcoming week and between part one and part three of the agenda. Okay, as the sessions will be recorded, uh, we would like to suggest that we leave uh, the QA, Q and a session for, for the end so that we can have videos that we can post process and isolate the presentations of each of these parts so that you can, to facilitate that you can later consult and review and, and replay the videos and find the useful contents for you instead of having to watch two hours, a two hours recording. Okay, and that's it. This is about um, the welcome and the, and the introductions.